Rob, congratulations, of course, for uh, an incredible victory by you tonight. Uh, you've been working so hard to get to this moment. I uh, imagine you haven't had much time to sit down and reflect yet, but can you just tell us what the emotions are like having, uh, having finally earned this, this belt? Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty good <laughs> to start with. It's, um, it's an accumulation of a lot of effort from a, little, a lot of different parties. You know, um, I have the best team in the world. I've said that every fight, and I, I, I truly mean it. You know, Henry Perez, Alex Prates, and Alex um, and Fabrizio Witte, you know, those, those three guys you see in and every fight and they're, they're always with me. They're very smart. They got me through this fight. You know, this fight was very hard for me. But I have a lot of team back home that, you know, don't get a lot of, a lot of credit and don't, don't, don't manage to get over here with Justin Fischel, Justin Lang, Stu McKinnon. Like, those boys really look after me. And, there's, um, you know, I have the best team in the world. I've said it before. After the first two rounds of the fight, all three judges had you down two rounds to none. I wonder what you were thinking at that point. I mean, obviously, you, don't, you never go into a fight wanting to lose rounds, but did you realize that might be a possibility against a guy like Yoel, but you could capitalize late on a guy that tends to fade? Or, you know, were you frustrated by, by what had happened in the first two rounds? Um, in the first round, he kicked my leg pretty hard. You know, he, uh, and that, that kind of put a, put a, I don't know, what, a, a blocker in the way of my game plan. And, uh, you know, the game plan was always to pepper him, to hurt him, to poke him away. And then in the later round, start to capitalize on that, on that constant damage. But um, it, 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 it put my game plan back a little bit. For the first two rounds, I had to concede that, and I had to play it a bit safer than usual. But, um, you know, in the end, it came around. Great, great cornering from my team. They, they really got me through this one. We uh, obviously saw you, you know, the, the knee being addressed there. Uh, do you know anything about the extent of the damage yet? I mean, I certainly you haven't had full testing on it yet, but, I mean, do, do you have an idea what might be wrong and kind of what you're looking at? In my expertise, it's sore. <laughs> well done. And last question I have for you. I mean, anytime somebody wins a belt, the first thing we ask them is, what's next? What's going to happen? We know what's next for you. It's Michael Bisping. I wonder what you thought. I mean, Michael Bisping is Michael Bisping. He's been that way for a long time. But, but what did you think about the exchange tonight and kind of the way he addressed you? And, and what did you think about the whole process? Um, Michael, you said it best yourself. Michael Bisping is Michael Bisping. Um, I'm the type of fighter that goes into every fight with no ill will towards any of my opponents. I'm an athlete first and foremost, and I, you know, we, we, we love the sport. Uh, I actually respect Michael Bisping. I respect him as the champion, even though he's injured and on the bench, and that's why there's an interim champ. Um, I respect him. I really do. I have a lot of respect for him. But, you know, we're going to touch gloves now. It's, it's, it's fate. We have to fight now. And uh, when we do, you know, there's going to be no mercy. Rob? Hey, first of all, congratulations. Um, I'm just wondering, just on Michael Bisping, um, obviously the lead-up between you and Yoel was one of very much a mutual respect between the two of you. Uh, that's probably not going to be the case with Michael Bisping. I was just wondering, how, how will that affect your preparation at all? Um, I don't know. I haven't got any bad advice from Michael. He hasn't done anything crazy to, to try and get, him, uh, get in my face. I think he respects me as well. You know, he is who he is, and he's going to do what he's going to do. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to be me. I go into the fight with the same amount of respect I have for every athlete. And I'm going to be me in that fight. I'm going to be me on the, on the media, on the, outside the fight. I'm going to be me. And, uh, you know, he can work with that. And uh, Dana said before, he, there's a possibility that that fight could take place in Australia. I know you said before that you'll fight anyone, anywhere. But would that make it a little bit extra special if you do get that shot and it is back home? Oh, of course, mate. Who doesn't like fighting at home? You know what I mean? Having it on your backyard is, is, is great. Great for me. It's great for all my support. I'd love to bring the fight back to Australia. You know, they, they, <laughs> they would love it. And um, what do you think your win tonight does for the sport back home? Um, I have a lot of support from the Australian crowd back home. I know this, and I'm blessed to, to be in this position. Every time I walk out into that octagon, I feel like I'm representing, you know, I'm representing my countries, Australia and New Zealand. Um, mate, it's, a, it's the highest honour and highest privilege. I try to conduct myself in a good manner outside the octagon as well as inside the octagon and try to be... You know, a, a champion needs to act like a champion. And, you know, I, I can hope, only hope I feel those shoes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Hey, Robert, right over here. Um, earlier this year, they announced that it was going to be Michael Bisping and George St. Pierre. Now here you are here with the title yourself. Um, just talk about, you know, at the beginning of the year, what you were feeling when you saw that, you know, the division was getting log jammed, and here you were winning these fights, but it didn't seem like you'd get a title shot. Yeah, um, at, that point, at that point in my career, I think people were still thinking I was a sleeper. Yeah. Uh, I think people were definitely underrating me a bit, and, and, and it's, it, that's fine, you know. I, I, 
I, I, I can only be me, you know. I, I fly a little bit under the radar, and that, that's fine. I, I let every one of my fights, I let my actions speak louder than my words, and uh, I hope tonight was another demonstration of that. But uh, definitely early in the year, there was a long jam, uh, log jam in the division, you know. There, there was nowhere to go. There was no reason to fight. There was no way to work up. You know, everyone has a goal of being the champion or being the best ever, and it's hard to do that when the champ is tied up with, with a, you know, another opponent that's not even in the division. So that was hard. That was, that was a hard time. But then with the, the interim belt and the, with the, the, the fight with Yoel Romero, everything starts flowing again. Even the fighters below me get a chance now to fight their way up again. And, you know, it's a great time to be a middleweight. And you were a product of the Ultimate Fighter. You won the Ultimate Fighter. Did you carry that with you uh, tonight, you know, in, into this, just, you know, for all those guys on that show and, you know, just being someone that, uh, you know, was a success from the Ultimate Fighter? <laughs> Um, I didn't think about it. <laughs> that's, like, that's so long ago. I can barely remember yesterday, to be honest. Like, it's, uh, that, was, that was a long time ago. More importantly than everything, than anything, every time I step into that octagon, I feel like I'm representing my, my, my nations. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I want to be a good role model to uh, young, up upcoming athletes. And, uh, you know, I want to be a role model just to, to, to men in general. And that kind of gets my next question. You know, how much do you think this win is, is going to impact, you know, uh, more Aussies like yourself, you know, trying to, uh, you know, get into the sport and, you know, sort of motivate them because now they have a role model in, in you as the champion? A hundred percent. You know, I got here training at home with, with my teams at home. I do all my training out of Sydney. It's a, it's a bit of an urban myth that you need to travel to these major camps to get all their work done. There's a lot of other fighters now doing it and, and getting the spotlight they deserve. But I do all my training in Sydney, you know, and, and I have the best team in the world. And I've said that and, and now I've proved that. So, um, you know, for the Australian crowd at home, it can only benefit them. You know, we have the talent, we have the potential at home to do what we need to do. And, uh, you know, I hope this just makes the sport grow. And last question for you. Uh, we know that Bisping is next. Are you still, though, a little bit worried that maybe St. Pierre somehow gets in there and gets that fight with Bisping, or is that completely off your mind at this point? Um, <laughs> I didn't even give it a thought, mate. You know, um, at this point in time, I'm pretty sure me and Bisping are fated to fight. You know, uh, we were supposed to fight another time, and then, you know, it's like snakes and ladders. I had to fight a lot of dudes to get back into that, into that range. But you know, now here I am again, and here we are again. We, we, we're going to fight. Um, what Bisping does, uh, who he fights, is that's his own business. I'm, I'm taking everything one fight at a time. I'm worrying about me. Uh, I've got the best team around me. You know, they make smart decisions with them, and uh, that's where we'll go from there. Uh, Robert, to your left. Uh, one question about the last 90 seconds or so of the fight. Uh, the judges had it two rounds apiece. Uh, there was that point where Romero goes to the ground. When he was out here a little while ago, he actually said he would need to go back and look at tape and see exactly what happened if he fell, whatever. I wanted to ask your thoughts about that. That moment, what your read was on that situation, uh, how he ended up on, on the mat, and then also following him to the ground. You had success on the feet, but obviously, you locked down the win in that last 90 seconds. Was that a cognitive thought in your head at that point, or did you even realize it at the time? Uh, mate, that's Australian wrestling for you. And <laughs> that's, um, you know, I think we got there in the scramble, and I had a really dominant position. I felt comfortable in that position to, to do damage and to control the fight. It was definitely a favorable position for me. I'm not going to give up a position like that for, you know, for, for no reason. Um, so I definitely thought. I'm in a strong position, let's stay here and let's try to elbow the hell out of him. Did you have any thought that this could be the fight right here? Did it feel as close uh, to you as it might have been at that point? Um, I could hear my corners, my corners were, were yelling at the time. Um, but you know, in the fight, timing is, is hard. You know, finding timing and, and, and trying to understand how, how soon or how much. I, I, don't, I don't fight like that, that's not how I fight. I don't fight calculated too much. I, I go in there and I, and I do my thing looking for the finish from the first minute to the last minute. And uh, I was trying to do that in that minute as well. Robert, right in front. Uh, congratulations. F first thing I want to ask you is, you know, last week uh, Manny Pacquiao, a great legend, loses to uh, Jeff Horn in Australia. So Jeff Horn wins the title. You come back and do this. I mean, did you take anything from that fight? Did you see that fight? Do you know Jeff at all? And was, you know, did, was there anything that you could take from his success over a legend like Pacquiao that kind of give you a little inspiration? Uh, it must be those Aussie shovels, huh? <laughs> no, but, um, you know, all props to Jeff Horn. He, he put his heart out on the line and fought a really good fight, a hard fight. And uh, I hope I did the same tonight. You know, I went out there, I put my heart on the line as well. We, uh, we dig deep, we train hard, and we get the job done. 
guess when you see that, you know, does it make it more real for you? Like, hey, you know, he was a 10 to 1 underdog or whatever, and he comes back and wins. Does it make it real? Hey, if I follow my game plan, if I do what my coach has told me to do, this is real, I can win this. It's like, do you, did it feel more tangible when you saw that? Role? Uh, to be honest, mate, I was fighting Yo Romero. There was not a second of attention or focus I could deviate for, 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 for him. You know, uh, every thought of every day went into fighting Yo Romero. That was, you know, I was preparing for a war with one of the most dangerous dudes in the world. And uh, I don't have time to think about any other fight, you know, or any other fight. Unfortunately, you know, I, I, I stayed in the media loop and, and, and some, some of my coaching team told me about the results. But, mate, I, I had all systems go on, on, on Yo Romero. And I just want to ask you about the pain in your leg when you were, you were throwing a lot of kicks and, you know, when you're bracing off that. I mean, how much did it hurt? Did you actively feel it or was it your adrenaline going you didn't feel it till later? Um, the first two rounds were pretty rough. Uh, you'll notice I don't throw any left kicks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, a, it, it was rough. But, uh, you know, I think this was a really good fight for me uh, at this time in my career. I'm young enough to, to make adjustments. I had a hard fight. I had trials I had to get through. And I can only come out of this stronger. You know, I'm going to go home like nothing's changed. I'm going to get back into the program and then just plug away so that the next time you see me step into the octagon, it's a better Robert Whitaker. Hey, Robert, uh, to your left. A little bit back further. There you go. Um, I may have heard you incorrectly, so please uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this. It, it was loud in the arena. Did you say that you had suffered the injury in camp and that you thought, you thought it was 100? You said something about it being 100% tonight, but then... Mate, uh, I'm not too sure. Like, even if it could have been absolutely perfect, but he stomped it so hard. Like, <laughs> I could have had an absolute pristine knee and then he stomped it, and then it wasn't so pristine. So, uh, you know, it, if it was good, it, it wasn't after that. <laughs> okay, so, but you did, you did do something to your left knee in, uh, during the training camp? Yeah, you know, every fighter has to, has to train with, with niggly injuries. Um, you know, I, I, I had niggly injuries coming into the fight. I thought they were 100% until Yo Mara stomped on it. So what, what does that feel like in the first round of, of your title fight you know, you've had, you had this injury that, that you thought was, was good and then it wasn't. I mean, was there any sense of panic even initially, at least initially, when, when that happened? It's kind of why I, I, I give a lot of credit of this fight to my, my corning, corners and my coaching staff because uh, it was there. You know, in the first and second rounds, it, it was there. It was hard to ignore because it was fresh. The injury was fresh and, and, and it hurt. <laughs> you know, and with the adrenaline running in a fight, for something to hurt, you know it's injured. So... Um, but my corners, you know, I have, like I said a hundred times, I have the best team in the world and they gave me precise answers. They gave me the cool and calm, collected focus that I needed. And I drew from that to, to really get over this, that, that little hill in this fight. And I know this is kind of asking you for a detailed answer on, on something you just don't know about yet, but are you concerned about the knee right now? Do you, do you feel like it could, you know, prevent you from getting back in the gym when you want it to be? Or are you pretty certain it'll... You're not concerned sitting out there. Mate, I could lose my leg and one of my coaches would still make me train. Trust me, I'll, I'll be training just fine. Hey, Robert, congratulations. Uh, just had a question about your hand because you thought that you had injured it after the Jacare fight. Yeah. And I know this was a big opportunity. How does it feel after the fight tonight? Um, my hands? Yeah. Uh, they, they're a little sore, <laughs> you know. That's that's the thing with throwing them at people. Sure. But um, they, 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 I, I, I have a really good rehab system back home. I have a really good, really good coaching staff, and um, we, we make sure that we train our our out season like rehab as much as the in season. But you don't think that you re-injured it or broke it or anything like that? Uh, not my hands at this stage, no. Okay. And would November seem like too soon for you, considering you fought in April and now in July? and that would be in four months, does that seem like it would be too soon to come back? Um, you know, I haven't given it much thought, to be honest. Like, this is all real fresh. Uh, I, I said to a lot of interviews before, before the fight that um, my, my calendar year really, literally ends before I fight Romero. And uh, the problem with that is that I'm not prepared for any answers afterwards. So um, looking at things, I, I have a bunch of little niggly injuries I have to get over. And uh, the four-month span seems pretty short to, to get over it, especially with my knee impacting the fight the way it did. You know, um, so I'm going to have to go home, see the doctors, see what they say, and get a proper medical opinion before I can make any other decisions.
just one more. Sometimes in the past we've seen people win the interim title and not even want to wear it. They want to wait for the real belt, the official belt, if you will. How do you feel about that belt? We've seen other people yeah. like Connor recently say, this is the belt, I'm the champion. Um, where do you fall as far as the interim belt is concerned? Um, mate, I had to fight a five round war with Yo Romero. I think if you fight a five round war with Yo Romero, you deserve a medal of your own because that dude is an absolute, you know, he's one of the most dangerous people on the planet. No one wants to fight him and for good reason. Um, so I worked hard for that, for that belt, for that bit of shiny metal there. And, um, you know, that's what that is a symbol of, that I am now the number one contender while the, the current champ is on the bench. I'm filling his seat in, at, the, at the moment. You know, I'm taking on the head honchos. I'm taking on those killers. And then I'm taking on the responsibility of being champion. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you very much.